So Yule is finally out of prison. Woohoo! And now the big question is, should you get Yula now that her rerun is just around the corner? I think the best way to look at it is to just have a look at what Yula can do. We're here with Yula and Masanori, and if we're going to talk about Yula, we could talk about Hyperbloom Yula, which is technically a team that does more damage. But that's not a Yula team, so I'm not going to count that. Instead, we're just going to do a physical Yula team. As she is intended. Let me just get Rosaria's ult. Gather. This is order. There is no escape. You can't run. Gather. Okay, here we go. Blood of frost. Rack and ruin. And so this is the Eula experience. You're basically trying to build up this big ass sword. Bam! That will then do 250,000 damage, at yeah. least with my build. And then you just try to battery her afterwards. Battle. Just like that. So, should you get Yula? No. I kind of don't really in recommend Yula. And for me personally, I have her and I almost never use her. The thing about Yula is that she's a physical hyper carry for the most part. And it's kind of difficult to recommend physical hyper carries because they're not particularly interesting. Since her previous rerun, there have been a few characters that have come out that make physical hyper carries a little bit more interesting, namely Dory and Mika, two healers. Dory, of course, being a fantastic battery slash uh, healer for someone like Yula, but she also works really well at a Quicken team, so there's value there. Whereas Mika is, I think, in theory, supposed to be the premier physical healer buffer character that also gives attack speed so there is some value in him being used in a Eula team and then of course there's also c6 maker which provides 60 percent uh, physical damage crit bonuses so that's really, really good it's kind of like how c6 sara is really really good in an electro team but that doesn't really change the fact that physical to me is probably the most boring element element in the game because every other element uses reactions and there's also off-field characters that can make use of various buffs and various reactions to do even more damage but physical doesn't really have that geo kind of doesn't have that either although technically you can kind of do that if you had albedo but i don't have a better but at least with geo in order to make a functioning geo team you just need geo characters who in turn more or less battery each other whereas with physical you're effectively at least using two elements in the form of Cryo and Electro to form Superconduct, and they're not exactly battering each other, are they? Uh, and then also you might chuck in someone like Zhongli, in which case you have three different elements that are not exactly battering each other. A, obviously, is a super battery, so she is the exception to this particular rule. Dory will do as much as she can, and Rosari is trying the best as she can to try and battery Yula, and Yula can sort of battery herself slightly, not really, but it's not exactly the most interesting sort of team to build around in my opinion uh, and then also on top of that like we only have really three physical characters who are like truly physical characters and that's Yula, Sinyan and Razor. Yuli and Sinyan do end up using physical damage a lot more than someone like Razor because Razor could potentially be played in Thundering Furry in which case he ends up being more of like a pyro electro character with C6 Bennett at the very least. You can kind of do the same thing with Yula and Sinyan and maybe play like a vape Yula team or a sort of mono paro Sinyan team. But at least with Yula and Sinyan, it seems like their kits are a little bit more kitted towards that physical damage, especially Yula. So in that regard, I kind of don't really like play physical hyper carries at all. And at that point, I don't really care to play Yula outside of just some people in my community asking me to actually play Yula. But if you're going to play Yula and if you're going to build Yula, we might as well have a look at like what you should do. Because it's kind of a one-trick pony. There's not really a whole lot to worry about when it comes to building Yula. In terms of building her artifacts, you're basically running four-piece Pale Flame or you're running two-piece, two-piece Bloodstain. Pale Flame seems to be specifically designed for Yula because Yula's skill actually resets when you use her ult which in turn allows you to use her skill again and this of course will satisfy the requirements for the four piece pale flame set so if you ever happen to have a decent four piece pale flame set i probably use that over a slightly better two piece two piece pale flame bloodstain 
And in terms of building her artifacts, it's basically attack, physical, damage per cent, and crit. That's pretty much it. No, nothing really dramatic is going to be changed there. I don't think there's any reason, I don't think there'll be any particular moment in time where you want to go attack attack crit though. But obviously you have Masanori, so if you happen to have a particularly good attack cup on, for example, Pale Flame, you might want to try that on Masanori and see if that ends up making a difference. But I suspect it won't be better than an attack physical damage crit build. In terms of weapons, it's pretty straightforward. Most of the time people are using something like Wolves Gravestone or Song of Broken Pines. You don't necessarily need to get Song of Broken Pines, I think, because Wolves Gravestone is so good. Alternatively, if you happen to have Beacon of the Reed Seeds, that might be the best option because, especially when it comes to trying to crit fish with Yula, like, you want as much crit rate as you can so that your big sword, when it drops, it actually does the crit to do even more damage. To the point where I would probably argue that building crit rate is a little bit more valuable than building crit damage, but just keep in mind that if you are using someone like Rosaria, then you do have additional crit rate coming in, so there is something to keep in mind. But even then, my RNG with Yula has been borderline trash garbage. So that's why I'm sticking to something like Serpent Spine for the most part, because that's giving me that crit rate that I so desperately need. Otherwise, if you're feeling particularly desperate, you could use Prototype Archaic. You could potentially use Joel, you could potentially use some of the other claymores that exist in the game, but I think generally speaking, Serpent Spine is the way to go. It's if you use the Battle Pass, that is. And then in terms of Eula's Constellations, honestly the only one that matters is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head and that's C6 and that's only for screenshot purposes. So I don't think Eula is all that Constellation dependent and I don't even think her Constellations are really all that worth it. So if you want to get Eula, I probably just stop at C0 Eula and you're pretty much good to go. That's pretty much it, like the only, re the only real reason to get Eula if you don't necessarily like Eula, and you certainly shouldn't get Eula if you don't necessarily like Eula, but the only real reason I could think of to get Eula if you don't necessarily like Eula is just on the off chance that she goes back to prison for another year and a half, but that's literally how FOMO works, so it's not even a good idea anyway. So for real, I, I don't have any particular reasons to offer to get Eula, and I probably will not be playing Eula again until something pops up. I don't play her that often. It just is what it is. Let me know what all of this in the comments below. How do you feel about Eula? Let me know in the comments. She's good at doing a lot of damage, and she was the original damage per screenshot character, but, you know, characters like A, Wu Tao. We've got a lot of characters now that do a lot of damage per screenshot, so. Eula's kind of not even unique in that regard anymore. But she is still, like, probably one of the strongest physical damage carries in the game. If you care about that. But yeah. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video. Hit that like button, subscribe for more Get Shinip action. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Solidify. Fake for mercy. Freeze to the core!